Good morning, good morning. This is Sunny with Creative Therapy. Hello to all my crazy crafting buddies out there. Okay, so I thought I would share. Let me back up. Yesterday I shared the collection from Craft Box UK, the Steampunk Beauty. Okay. And I have decided to do a journal with it, with a mixed media cover. And the inside will be a junk journal. So I thought I would document the process, at least, at least in bits and pieces, just in case it's a win. Then we may want to see how I did it. So this is the piece that I'm just in love with. It needs to be featured on the front cover. And if my light is poor, I apologize. I'm trying. Oh, that did not help a bit. Okay. Anyway, I've kind of got my camera propped up. <laughs> I'm not even going to explain how because it's too embarrassing. Anyway, so I thought I would let you know where we started. Like I said, just in case this is a win, we may want to know how it happened. So what I've done is I've cut two pieces of relatively thin chipboard. This is not the real heavy stuff. Um, they measure six and one quarter inches wide. Geez, the lighting's bad. I'm so sorry. By eight and a half inches long. Okay. Then I also, so two of those. Then I've connected them and created a spine out of the Tim Holtz grunge paper. Let me, gosh, that light is just so bad, y'all. I'm so sorry. Um, let me grab the package and show you. I'm pretty sure you can still get this. It is grunge paper. There you go. Tim Holtz Ideology grunge paper. Six sheets in a package that each measure six inches wide by 12 inches long. It's not very pretty. It's easy to overlook at the craft shop because, you know, it's just this gray stuff hanging there. I debated using Tyvek for the spine. I didn't want a hard spine because I'm sewing two signatures in, and that's what you see. These are my pencil marks for approximately where my signatures are going to go. So I wanted the spine to be an inch and a half. So I had a half inch in between signatures and in between the signatures and the cover. But I wanted them to overlap my chipboard by an inch on each side. So I cut this piece three and a half inches wide by eight and a half inches long. Now, my next thought, the whole subscription box came wrapped in this beautiful kind of a deep, dark, burgundy uh, tissue paper. So I plan to decoupage the front cover with this. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm decorating it yet. I know that I would like to use probably this chipboard piece. I would like to use maybe some texture paste and use this stencil in the background. Um, but other than that, I don't really know what will be on the front cover. I just want some pretty background so that this thing pops. So I'll probably sit it somewhere on that chipboard with the stenciling in the background. I don't know yet. I just have to play with it and see what happens. Um, and I'm sorry you can see this junk. Man, this is not a good camera setup, but I thought, I was hoping it would be better than me just trying to hold my phone and use one hand while I was trying to tell you about these things. I don't want to really use these papers on the front cover because so much will be covered. And that is my very favorite image, the one that I tried to show in my video yesterday and I kind of breezed by it and didn't go back and find it, but I love the dragon. The dragon is definitely my favorite, but I don't want to put him on the cover and then cover him up with the beetle. So I'm probably going to go with one of these background papers and kind of piece out something. Like I said, this will be in the background. We'll probably get some collaging going on with a little bit of paper. 
some texture, some more texture, pop the beetle on there. Um, I'm sure there will be some flowers involved. We've got these beautiful flowers. I want to save the ephemera for inside on tags and pockets and this, that, and the other. It's a junk journal, so it's going to have a lot of blank pages for journaling. But, you know, we got to decorate. And I chose this size for two reasons. One, it has to be wide enough for this beetle. The beetle measures almost five inches, like four and three quarters. And I have this gorgeous handmade paper that I wanted to use. And I don't want to cut it because I don't want to lose these lovely edges that you get from handmade paper. So I just folded it in half and kind of used that as the guideline for the size I wanted to make my book. Because see, my beetle fits on there just, just fine. So anyway, that's the plan for the day. If, it, if it's a win, you'll know because this video will be up. Because if it's a fail, I'm not putting the video up. Duh. Anyway, we're going to... And see, that flower matches that, too. Look at that. Gorgeous. All right. Wish me luck, and I'll be checking in. Ciao for now.